What is the point in having a brown bread with a jam? Would rather have you eat a white bread with some sorted vegetables and a shredded chicken or a scrambled egg. The world's most healthiest food, you pair it wrongly, you can actually make it unhealthy. We have seen people do this with say brown rice. Brown rice with curd as against white rice with a lot of vegetables and green leafy vegetables and lean protein. You don't need millet to become healthy if you don't like it. You can actually eat the other food types of food also. Make sure you add enough amount of fiber and protein, right? Keep it sustainable. You don't have to eat food that doesn't taste well. Lifestyle changes like running a marathon. If you cannot sustain it for a longer duration, what is the point in being first for the first few kilometers and not able to run the remaining and finish reach the finish line? One of the very important tissue apart from liver which absorbs glucose from the blood is muscle. Muscle holds glycogen, the glucose inside it in the form of glycogen. This glycogen is the fuel. Do not try to get into perfection because with while you aim for perfection, you probably will do it for a month or two but this is something that you should be able to do it for the rest of your life and that's extremely important aspect of managing any lifestyle disease and the number one lifestyle disease of metabolic syndrome is diabetes. What gets measured gets managed and what gets managed gets better. A diabetic person, if that person is checking his or her blood sugar levels every day or at least every 2-3 days in the morning and if that person sees the blood sugar levels are spiking, unknowingly that person will make some changes in their lifestyle. The 14th of November is the World Diabetes Day and uh, India is fast becoming the diabetes capital of the world. A disease which earlier used to be something which is common among people who are excessively on calories and who are socio-economically forward is no longer the case. It is now rampant across various socio-economic strata. And the cost of managing diabetes according to various research, of course it varies from city to city in India, but it varies somewhere between uh, anywhere around 20,000 per year, even up to around 80,000, 90,000 per year, depending upon how much has it progressed, depending upon the age of a person and the city of course that you live in. These costs would involve in terms of the medications, the routine tests that has been done, the loss of uh, economic productivity, so on and so forth. But more than the economic productivity, the real trouble about diabetes is that it is actually known as a slow poison and rightfully so. Why is it known as a slow poison? This metabolic disease, meaning some aspect of metabolism in, in this particular case, it's basically when we eat carbohydrate that gets broken down into its individual units, which is glucose, and that has to be absorbed into the blood. That metabolic pathway is somewhere, somehow impaired. Multiple reasons for that. And this can lead to various complications. It is known as a slow poison because, see, think about it, if there is any other particular condition, say if a person had a minor fall and had a minor fracture, if you pain a lot, that person will do something about it, right? If there is a small cut or an inflammation, they will go get a TT injection, will do something about it, will attend to it. But in most cases, diabetes, people kind of live with it because it's it need not necessarily cause day-to-day -day problems, especially in the beginning phase. So people live with it. And also, according to many studies, many people won't even realize that they are having diabetes until they get to do some random check or probably some blood test which was part of some corporate wellness programs. That's how most of the Indians get to know and they, they are shocked to know that they are diabetes. The problem is that in the meantime, a lot of complications would have already have started happening and these complications can impact various organs such as uh, it can impact kidney. It's called uh, diabetic nephropathy. It can impact the nerves known as the diabetic neuropathy. It can impact vision and retina called diabetic retinopathy, microvascular complications. It can also cause macrovascular complications such as it can impact uh, heart cardiovascular diseases including heart attacks such as silent attack. It can cause uh, stroke, it can impact the brain, so on and so forth. We want to discuss about the management of diabetes both from a, a lifestyle management aspect which is diet and exercise which is our forte and also throw some light with regards to the medical management which needs to be done with the help of an endocrinologist or a diabetologist. Now let's start with the lifestyle aspect of managing diabetes. When we talk about lifestyle aspect of managing diabetes, essentially three main pillars of lifestyle that is the food that we eat, how physically are we active and the sleep and stress management bit of it. These three pillars form the fundamental aspect of the lifestyle bit of managing diabetes. Coming to the first one which is eating healthy. Now for sure 
reducing carbohydrate reducing sugar including fiber uh, all these things are important including complex carbohydrate is helpful to make sure that the blood glucose level doesn't spike all these things are important but it is also important to make sure that it is sensible and it is sustainable so what i mean by sensible and sustainable i'll give you an example brown bread is healthier than white bread we all know that because it has slightly higher amount of bran and fiber and protein but what is the point in having a brown bread with a jam would rather have you eat a white bread with some sorted vegetables and a shredded chicken or a scrambled egg right so keep it sensible remember the world's most healthiest food you pair it wrongly you can actually make it unhealthy we have seen people do this with say brown rice brown rice with curd as against white rice with a lot of vegetables and green leafy vegetables and lean protein the second option will actually stand better in terms of managing diabetes as against the first one so keep it sensible it is also important to keep it sustainable why am i saying this i'll give you an example see millet is extremely healthy food it has many micronutrients such as calcium zinc many other things it also has fiber comparatively higher amount of protein all that is great so millet is an amazing food but i'll be honest with you i didn't grow up eating millet i am a i am a malayali i am a south indian i am i'm not used to eating millet at least i didn't grow up eating millet now a millet say a ragi dosa or an idli is something that i would like to have once in a while but it's definitely not palatable to me to have it every day okay and i'm a health expert but i keep telling that you don't need millet to become healthy if you don't like it you can actually eat the other food types of food also make sure you add enough amount of fiber and protein right keep it sustainable you don't have to eat food that doesn't taste well to your mouth or something that is not palatable just because you want to become healthy that's a wrong idea of becoming healthy right remember as we always keep saying that lifestyle changes like running a marathon if you cannot sustain it for a longer duration what is the point in being first for the first few kilometers and not able to run the remaining and finish reach the finish line right so lifestyle change always has to be that so do not get into this idea of insane dieting and taking the fun out of life and eating just because you want to manage diabetes because that's not something that will be able to do for rest of your life and that's very very important so it has to be sensible it has to be sustainable it also has to be scientific mind you diabetic person one of the complications as i earlier said is impacting the kidney so the creatinine levels might spike sometimes the kidney is impacted the urine will become frothy and will have albumin in such a scenario don't just go and mindlessly add a lot of protein without of course talking to your endocrinologist because excessive protein may sometimes impair or kind of strain the kidney right so there is a scientific aspect of looking at it as well so when it comes to the first lifestyle the first part of the lifestyle management which is diet make sure it is scientific make sure it is sensible and make sure it is sustainable only then you will be able to do for a longer duration okay now coming to the second aspect of the lifestyle change which is exercises exercises plays a very important role in managing diabetes exercises actually might even help in reversing insulin resistance to some extent in that sense you can actually i would reversing diabetes may not be technically the right word to use remission probably would be the right word to use but if i if you can actually improve your body's ability to absorb glucose and glucose utilization gets improved then I, we can actually kind of refer to it as a diabetes reversal right and this happens because your body is able to absorb more glucose and the one of the very important tissue apart from liver which absorbs glucose from the blood is muscle muscle holds glycogen the glucose inside it in the form of glycogen this glycogen is the fuel and this is used to extract energy now if exercises specifically weight training is done it helps in the glucose utilization and that is very important aspect of managing insulin resistance so that becomes very very important integral part of exercise management or a lifestyle bit of managing diabetes now the third part is sleep of course if you are somebody who use a glucometer on a daily basis and check the blood glucose levels on a daily basis if your sleep is impaired and if you check your blood sugar levels next day morning it will be high stress increases uh, cortisol levels in the body it uh, lack of sleep also increases the cortisol levels in the body and it reduces insulin sensitivity thereby spiking the blood sugar levels so these three aspects forms the fundamental basis of managing diabetes from a lifestyle basis and remember as i earlier said do not try to get into perfection because with while you aim for perfection you probably will do it for a month or 
or two but this is something that you should be able to do it for rest of your life and that's extremely important aspect of managing any lifestyle disease and the number one lifestyle disease of metabolic syndrome is diabetes now coming to the other aspect of management which is the medical management or the curative healthcare medical science has improved tremendously in the last 10 years what used to be a metformin or a glimepiride is now also supplemented with a variety of other drugs often which also helps in protecting kidney and protecting heart so but this needs to be done with the help of an endocrinologist it is extremely important these blood sugar levels and associated complications and parameters are checked and then an endocrinologist decides what kind of a medications to be done the hba1c the three month blood sugar level is something that needs to be checked at least around 6 months if you are already diabetic and if it requires any medications or management or change in it has to be administered with the help of a endocrinologist remember self medication is very bad so equally important is that you do not down regulate or up regulate the dosages by yourself because there are various class of drugs to manage diabetes the way one type of a drug would manage say way a gluconom or a glycophage or a metformin would bring down your glucose level is very different from say a janumet or a dapagliflozin would do so for a doctor to decide which tablet and why there is very significant specific reason so do not self medicate that's very very important lastly these are all lifestyle change right now uh, we go by the principle that what gets measured gets managed and what gets managed gets better a diabetic person if that person is checking his or her blood sugar levels every day or at least every 2 3 days in the morning and if that person sees the blood sugar levels are spiking unknowingly that person will make some changes in their lifestyle it might be in terms of while probably having a tea or coffee in the office probably will reduce the sugar intake a little bit and these kind of smaller smaller changes done cumulatively in a day would have contributed to do a significant change with regards to your glycemic management so and why did that person do it only because the person checked the blood sugar levels in the morning right so what gets measured will get managed at least subconsciously we will make these kind of decisions so it's important to do these routine tests and checks in time and uh, that will help in making these kind of uh, decisions and eventually over a period of time we will also better it so that's very very important last but not the least let me again and remind you this is a lifestyle disorder for a lifestyle disorders the primary management bit has to be lifestyle change if you're doing this lifestyle change you probably will bring back blood sugar levels to a reasonable extent so just just to explanation's sake say a person who's a uh, 3 month blood sugar average hba1c suppose it is 10 10% with a lifestyle change this person is able to lifestyle change meaning the three things that i mentioned eating healthy being physically active and sleep and stress management this person was able to bring down the hba1c from 10 to say 7 and a half significant improvement great but 7 and a half is still high it's 7 and a half is still has the room for creating complications and uh, kidney damage or these kind of earlier things that i mentioned including leading up to even heart conditions so in such a scenario you need plan b the plan b being the medication so medications are important do not shy away from medication thinking that oh they have side effects the side effects of uncontrolled diabetes probably 10000 times more than the medicines that you would be having and remember our health is important not just for us it is also important for the family who depend on us for our kids for our partner for our parents for our siblings who also depend on us who for our loved ones so on this world diabetes day i hope that we are able to take our health under control and get this silent killer the number one metabolic disease metabolic syndrome under control and we strive to become healthy and fit